What's going on YouTube? It's Paul Paul Piper back here with another pipe tobacco review. And this evening we are reviewing Escudo Navy Deluxe Pipe Tobacco from Scandinavian Tobacco Group. And I am smoking one of my antique church wardens. This is actually from the uh, BRC Pipe Company. This thing probably dates back to pre-1930s. So a Scudo comes in kind of a classy tin. On the reverse it says, a combination of full-bodied Virginia from North Carolina and Virginia blended with Perique from Louisiana are the cor cornerstones of a Scudo. This blend is pressed and matured before it is spun and cut into coins. So, kind of unique. Go ahead and show you what they're talking about. There's the coins. They kind of look like little pepperonis, to be honest. There's two of them pressed together. Grassiness, hay of the Virginia with spiciness, figgy undertones of the Perique. I actually put two medallions in here, or two coins. Come on, lighter. It's a good smoke. I think it has a little bit more of a milder, mellow flavor to it than uh, maybe Orlick Golden Sliced. It's similar. I mean, it's a vapor. This is a, a good smoke, solid smoke. I almost think that I'm getting more of the Perique, the spiciness. Than anything else, which isn't a bad thing. I enjoy Perique. So we'll sit here and let this uh, continue to make an impression. I have an interesting topic for tonight. Which state taxes the shit out of pipe tobacco? I want you all to write down your selection on which state you think has the highest tobacco uh, excise taxes for pipe tobacco. Where do you think it is? California? You think it's uh, New York? Connecticut? Massachusetts? Any of those uh, New England states? What do you think? Well, Write your selection down, and we'll go over it here. Now, taxes on all tobacco products are figured one of two ways. Either ad valorem, which is a, 
uh, uh, tax based on the wholesale price of the tobacco itself. And the other way some states do it, very few states, they do it uh, based on unit. So a unit might be one uh, 1.76 ounce 10 or whatever the denomination is and they'll tax it that way now if you analyze the tax policy it makes more sense to do it based on unit because that's going to be fair to premium tobacco and budget tobacco because they're getting taxed at the same rate, the same cost to the consumer, you know, essentially. So it leaves just that uh, uh, manufacturer's cost and the production of it, plus the federal taxes which are consistent across the country, and then you have the, the state excise tax. But if they do it ad valorem, based on the uh, wholesale cost, then the premium tobacco has a higher wholesale cost than the uh, budget or economy, so they get more taxes assessed to the premium. So what's that going to do to a uh, budget-conscious, you know, pipe tobacco consumer, well, they might be more inclined to go with the budget or economy. So that's going in a little bit uh, in, in tax theory with ad valorem taxes and uh, unit-based or measurement-based taxes. So let's, uh, let's get started here. All right. Sorry to tell you, Bryce Parker and uh, Northwest Pipe Smoker, or whatever your handle is, and uh, who's the other guy that does uh, stuff and things. Both of those gentlemen live in the great state of Washington, and Mr. Parker resides, I do believe, in the state of Minnesota, and they both have the highest. They're tied for number one. They are fucking you over. They're actually charging 95% ad valorem tax. So tax on the wholesale price. So you're basically paying the state of Minnesota and Washington respect, uh, respectively almost the same amount that the item actually cost. So they're really laying the wood to you in those states. And uh, close behind was the uh, socialist paradise of Vermont. Vermont comes in at 92%. So they're uh, likely redistributing that, that income to, uh, I don't know, people live on communes or uh, maple farms, organic maple farms. I don't know. Anyway. And then Utah, the good old Mormons who aren't using, aren't supposed to use tobacco or caffeine or anything else. They're hitting the, hitting the, uh, the good old Mormon state with 86% ad valorem. And this is a surprising one to me. Because when you look at the map and see where you know these states are, northern states, non-tobacco producing states, western, east coast, yeah, that makes sense. Florida. Florida. 85%. What the hell? 85%. On pipe tobacco. But they don't tax large cigars. 
So, lobbyists, anyone? You got the uh, cigar lobby down there saying, hey, you know, give us uh, a break, incentivize our business, but go ahead and screw over the pipe tobacco business and others. I mean, Florida is pretty much ridiculous on everything but large cigars. So, Florida, I don't know about you. You're not really Southern anymore. You're more, I don't know, been taken over by Yankees, I guess. And I say that from a garage in the state of Michigan. In Ohio, born and bred. So, whatever. Trivia fact. Which state of the Union contributed the most generals and the, had the uh, uh, largest involvement in the Civil War? Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Ding-ding. Ohio. Ohio. Yep. Ohio. Now, which states that do ad valorem are the cheapest for pipe smokers? Where is pipe smoker utopia, at least when it comes to the pocketbook? Well, way on down in Dixie, the good old state of South Carolina, those rebels, 5%. Five percent. So, if you're sitting in Charleston right now or wherever in uh, South Carolina, I guess you can go to your local tobacco shop and not have to pad your ass because you got screwed by the politicians. Because you're only getting charged 5%. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Where else is good? Well, probably going to be a southern tobacco state. And uh, shout out to my old buddy Berg. Heisenberg. 067 Berg. A resident of the great state. The volunteer state of Tennessee. Tennessee comes in at 6.6%. Ad valorem tax, tax. What about the next best? Well, another uh, southern state. Some people might not consider it southern, but it's southern. West Virginia. West Virginia comes in at 7% on pipe tobacco. So, if you live in Ohio... Uh, my native state, you might want to drive east, southeast, and uh, go to West Virginia and get your shit. Um, Ohio didn't come in uh, poorly. I mean, it came in at 17. 17, so it's, uh, it's in the lower, it's lower quarter, third, something like that. Michigan, where I live now, Michigan came in, I think, at 32%, so it's still, Michigan's about average, a little bit below, a little bit cheaper, you know, than average, but, man, I can't believe some of these states. Um, one that really kind of shocked me was Oklahoma. Oklahoma's 80%, 80%. Oklahoma, a red state, you know, all these cowboys and ranchers and people who, you know, likely enjoy tobacco of one form or another. Man, they're getting screwed. They're getting screwed there. You Sooners, come on now. Now, there's a few states that tax pipe tobacco based on either weight or unit. Um, and there's only a few of them. Texas, Pennsylvania, uh, Arizona, and Alabama. Alabama. Where are you from, son? Greenbow, Alabama. Alabama. Alabama comes in at the cheapest. The cheapest. 
cheapest overall. If you're talking about two ounces or less of pipe tobacco, so your standard, you know, uh, quantity um, of a 10, you know, you're looking at 10 cents, 10 cents an ounce. That's all they're, they're tacking on there, the great state of Alabama. Uh, Arizona is actually pretty low, 22 cents an ounce. Texas, you know, they come in at $1.22 an ounce. So Texas, of the ones that do it as a unit or measurement based, you know, they're the highest. But anyway, um, we'll go back here. I just thought that was kind of interesting. You know, at one time, I used to, you know, Indiana, I thought Indiana did have cheaper taxes on chewing tobacco and pipe tobacco, but not anymore, not anymore. So now... It's gonna make the most sense for me to pick up stuff when I go back to Ohio. And it's visible, I mean, it's visible. Ohio's got much cheaper than Michigan. And uh, you know, the overall cost, I don't know if the manufacturer has different costs uh, on their wholesale price based on logistics, like shipping costs, you know. If it's manufactured in Kentucky and they ship it out to Washington, you know is the base price more expensive or are they keeping it fairly consistent to the wholesalers? I don't know. Or to the retailers. I don't know. But, uh, that's just excise taxes. So, um, Escudo, Escudo's good. As far as, a, a Virginia Perique, like I said, it, I think it started out more of a Perique forward, now it's just kind of, um, less interesting. I can't say it's bad. It's not bad. It's quality tobacco. It's mild. I don't really get the, the grassiness of the Virginia. I mean, I think it's a almost bland mild tobacco with a little bit of the, the spiciness that kind of shines through from the pre. So it's good, but not great. It's not great. So Paul Paul Piper is going to uh, rate a Scudo Navy Deluxe. Oh, I'm going to give it I'm going to give it a 6.75 to 7. That's what I'm going to give it. I can give a range, I guess. I've been kind of doing that on a few of them. And when you're the one making the video, you can do those things. You know, may not make sense, may piss people off, but you can do it. Oh. Mm. I'll tell you. If it's between this and... Orlick Golden Sliced. I'm going to pick up the Orlick Golden Sliced and leave this on the shelf. Um, you know, there's some others in its category. Uh, so, try it, but maybe you'll like it more than more than I did. And that's what's, you know, interesting about this hobby is that we all have different palates, different tastes, uh, what may be great and the, you know, Desert Island blend for one, another person may uh, toss it, you know, in the trash and have no use for it. So, you know, explore your own preferences and your own favorites, and uh, you'll be glad you did. So, until next time, the good Lord's willing and the creek don't rise. I'll see you right back here. Take care, folks.